All right, we are back and we're gonna look at composite mechanics. Um, so composites are basically materials that uh, contain more than one type of material, they're combined. So typically there's gonna be a matrix component, that's the majority component, um, at least major in terms of volume fraction. Uh, and there's gonna be a fiber component that's typically stiffer or tougher than the matrix material. Um, and those will be basically lower volume fraction. So um, they can be in particle form, fibers, precipitates. One of the most famous is hips, high impact polystyrene, which has a matrix that is composed of rubber or polybutadiene, uh, and then basically hard precipitate particles that are made of polystyrene, hence polystyrene. So that allows you, that composite allows you to increase the toughness of a material because you have the more compliant or the more ductile rubber versus the basically more brittle and stiffer polystyrene. So our fiber, our particles, our precipitates, that in this instance is gonna be the polystyrene, lower volume fraction, higher stiffness or toughness, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that will be our fiber fraction or particle you know, fraction um, as opposed to the matrix. The matrix fraction will be, again, more compliant and have a higher volume fraction. So again, that is the volume fraction matrix, F sub M. Um, that's how we're gonna kind of denote it varies from zero to one fraction of our precipitate or fiber or um, essentially whatever you're trying to call it and that's going to correlate to an elastic modulus of the fiber or the precipitate and then there's going to be a modulus associated with the matrix as well so again typically for any composite the fraction of the precipitate of the fiber is going to be less than the fraction volume fraction of the matrix stiffness of our precipitate is going to be greater than that of the matrix um, so you can have a the composite is going to be basically an average or sum of both of those um, but for a fiber uh, reinforced composite, it will be depend on the direction. So if I'm pulling basically on the, you know, uh, basically in the same end of the fibers, um, I am going to have the same stresses, but the strains will be different. Um, so actually if I pull, excuse me, longitude, if I pull transverse to the, uh, that direction. So my stresses will be the same, but my strains will be different. And you see my Young's modulus there is gonna be lower. Makes sense. If I pull transverse, it'll be lower than if I pull parallel along the longitudinal axis. Now the stresses are going to be different. They're going to sum. The strains are going to be equal. If the fiber reinforced composite, you can kind of think of it like a, you know, those are in parallel effectively. So we can actually calculate what is the fraction and actually the modulus there too. And you can plot both of them. This type of composite is a transversely isotropic composite, meaning that we have a modulus that in this particular example, the one one direction is larger than in the two two and the three three. But in the two two and the three three, those Young's moduli are the same because those are just basically pulling transverse to the fiber direction. So we can make that equivalent. So again, transversely isotropic material. So that is what we again looking back at our back at our uh, basically anisotropic um, tensors. That's what we would qualify with for this system, and we could be. Basically, you have the fiber in the 1-1 one, one direction, the 2-2 two, two direction, or the 3-3 three, three direction. And this tensor would change slightly, but this is the typical form, again, for this specific direction of the fiber. So you see that the 2 and the 3, this is the most generic case right here. You see that the 2 and 3 are you know, basically still you know, rotated out there. Um, but again, because of our symmetric tensor, we're going to see that those values um, basically have to be equal to one another, so you can make that equivalence. And if you have a plane stress state or in-plane stress and strains, you can simplify it down to that um, basically one by three and three by three directions. So that's kind of the critical thing here is we can replace in that, uh, in that tensor and we could do the same type of operations that we've done previously. So we can find the new stresses by just taking our transformation matrix, dotting it with our stress tensor, same thing with the new strains. You could use the Reuters matrix if you're trying to keep and utilize engineering shear strain, or you could just convert, um, which I would definitely always try to do. Always keep it in tensorial, because then you could skip essentially that Reuters matrix uh, step and basically stop yourself from having to do a lot of uh, mathematical calculations <laughs> unnecessarily. Uh, but again, it's your choice. Or you can kind of do that whole um, kind of big mess that you see here. So you can kind of take that E prime and then do all the requisite transformations that are required. Um, so you could just do the T dot S dot T inverse and that would be the end of the story times that, basically that old stress value. So you could go that way. Um, all right, so the new, new stress prime there and calculate that out. So this is your composite mechanics in a nutshell. 
So um, lots of problems that are going to come. See you next video.